Lecture 12, Fragmentation. Unfortunately, the Renaissance was not only a time of tremendous creativity, but also one of fragmentation, especially religious and political. A significant form of rupture occurred shortly before the beginning of our chosen date for the 1453 beginning of the Renaissance. This was the Papal Schism, lasted from 378 to 1418, in which at first two men, and later three men, all claimed to be the Pope. The only claimant who was the legitimate Pope was the one from Rome. Although the claimant from Avignon, France, and the claimant of the illegitimate Pisa and Council had considerable backing, even in the Church, they never had a valid claim. Eventually, this issue was resolved, but not before creating considerable confusion in the Church and politically by pitting nations against one another. A main factor why this schism occurred was because of French and Italian rivalry. In the early 1300s, the French succeeded in hosting the papacy in their lands at Avignon, even though technically Avignon was considered part of the Papal States. The Avignon papacy lasted from 1309 to 1377. Realizing that Rome had been neglected while the papacy was in Avignon, the Renaissance papacy that, papacy that followed both the Avignon papacy and papal schism financed rebuilding and beautifying the city of Rome. These efforts of theirs are commendable. However, other aspects of the Renaissance popes were far from stellar. For this reason, no Renaissance pope has ever been formally considered for canonization. Papal vices of this time included sins against the Sixth Commandment, promoting relatives to high office, and financial mismanagement. The loss of papal credibility due to papal schism coupled with the corruption within the Renaissance papacy was an important factor in a non-determinative manner of first religious and then political breaks within the West. Other factors include the Islamic threat kept at bay in the 1571 Battle of Lepanto, the invention of the printing press, and the desire of some European nobles to gain control over church property and power. In examining this fragmentation that occurred, we will look at Martin Luther, Huldrych Zwingli, John Calvin, and King Henry VIII. This will be followed by an overview of the Catholic response to the breakup of Europe at the Lateran Council V and the Council of Trent. Martin Luther Martin Luther was born to a Catholic family. His father made money by overseeing copper mines and at one point was a town councillor at Mansfield, Germany. From 1497 to 1505, Martin Luther studied at various schools, including at the University of Erfurt, where he received an advanced degree in January of 1505. A few months later, in July of 1505, a thunderstorm so terrified him that he cried out to St. Anne that if he is helped, he will dedicate himself to God. During Luther's time, Catholic German miners were devoted to St. Anne. That same year, he entered the Augustinian Monastery in Erfurt. In 1507, he was ordained to the Catholic priesthood. Only a year later began teaching at the University of Wittenberg. In 1512, he successfully attained a doctorate in sacred scripture, which allowed him to lecture on scripture. In October of 1517, Martin Luther is reputed to having posted his famous 95 Theses in which he raised questions concerning the Catholic faith. After continuing to dispute Catholic doctrine, Luther was excommunicated in 1520. He, respond, he responds by burning a, the papal bull which contains his excommunication. The following year, 1521, Luther is summoned to the Diet of Worms. At the Diet of Worms, he stands fast to his convictions. In 1522, he translates the New Testament into German and publishes it. Partly as a result of Luther's questioning of authority, in 1524 a huge peasant revolt begins. Luther responds in 1525 by issuing his against the robbing and murderous hordes of peasants. That same year he marries Katharina von Bora, a former Cistercian nun, and publishes De Servo Arbitrio, which translates into On the Non-Free or Bound Will. In 1529, he publishes two catechisms. Shortly before the Council of Trent, Luther publishes in 1543 concerning the Jews and their lives. In the year of the Council of Trent, Luther publishes against the papacy in Rome and institution of the devil. 
the following year, in 1546, Luther dies. In his wake, Christianity in Europe was left divided between Protestant followers of Luther and Catholics. The resulting fragmentation of Europe and Christianity was not solely due to Martin Luther's efforts. A variety of factors coalesced that caused European society to be ripe for such divisions to occur. The Avignon Papacy, the Papal Schism, the deplorable example of a good number of Renaissance popes had caused the Papacy to lose some, but not all, of its ability to be a principle of unity. Due to the recent introduction into Europe by the German Johannes Gutenberg of a metal, movable-type printing press, messages calling for rebellion could be disseminated with a speed never before possible. Luther and his fellow Protestants availed themselves of this technological advancement more than Catholics did. Finally, some German princes viewed Martin Luther as a German patriot who could free them from being beholden to the Holy Roman Emperor and Roman Pope. By insisting in his 1520 address to the German nobility that the nobles stop paying fees to Rome, Luther quickly gained political support from German political rulers. For this reason, the Lord Elector Frederick of Saxony and other German nobles lent support to Luther and gave Luther protection at the 1521 Diet of Worms presided over by the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. Charles V was convinced that Luther was a heretic. In order to avoid a civil war, though, Charles V chose not to stop Luther. Heretical beliefs that Martin Luther and his immediate followers promoted including, included rejecting the Eucharistic doctrine of transubstantiation in favor of consubstantiation, the Mass is not a sacrifice, faith alone justifies, and every Christian is equally a confessor as anyone else. These and other heresies were enshrined in the Lutheran 1530 Augsburg Confession. Huldrych Zwingli and John Calvin like Luther, the Swiss Protestant leader Zwingli and the Frenchman John Calvin were also once practicing Catholics. Zwingli had even been ordained to the priesthood. While Luther was protesting against Catholic rule in his German lands, Zwingli condemned Catholicism in Switzerland. In doing so, he requested that Catholic monasteries be dissolved and the money obtained from them be used to fund poorhouses, schools, and orphanages. With respect to Catholicism, Zwingli's doctrinal teachings were more radical than Luther's. For example, Zwingli maintained that the Eucharist only symbolizes the body of Christ and in no way contains the presence of Christ in a special manner. John Calvin replaced Zwingli's leadership role in Swiss lands after Zwingli was killed in a battle. As Luther can be understood as the inspirer of the Protestant Reformation, Calvin can fairly be seen as the organizer of Protestantism. One key way he brought about order to the Protestants was with his 1536 Institutes of the Christian Religion, which systematically presents key Protestant teaching from a Calvinistic perspective. Calvin's doctrinal teachings is often represented by the simple acronym TULIP. The 1619 Calvinist of Dort summarized the teaching contained in the Institutes of the Christian Religion in the five ways represented by this acronym. We are totally depraved. Only those God preordains by unconditional election will be saved. By dying only for these elect few, Christ's atonement is limited. Grace is irresistible to the elect, and the elect will persist in grace in a deterministic manner. In contrast with Calvinism, Catholicism teaches that God predestines no one to go to hell and that salvation is offered to all. King Henry VIII Across the English Channel, another division, headed by the king, took place shortly after Luther's. At first, the English king Henry VIII resisted Protestantism by defending Catholicism in his defense of the seven sacraments, likely written by St. Thomas More. For his efforts, Henry VIII was conferred the title Defender of the Faith in a 1521 papal bull. Unlike Luther, Calvin, and Zwingli, Henry VIII separated from the Catholic Church and basically took England with him. He broke with the church not because he disagreed with many points of doctrine, but rather out of his desire to remarry, so as to have a son who would inherit his throne. 
When the Pope refused to grant Henry VIII an annulment to Catherine of Aragon, daughter of Spain's King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, he took matters in his own hands by divorcing Catherine of Aragon and by marrying Anne Boleyn. He filed these acts by declaring himself head of the Church of England in his Supremacy Act of 1534. Since both St. Thomas More and St. John Fisher refused to sign the Supremacy Act, they were martyred. Catholics throughout England also suffered in a nationwide persecution headed by Henry VIII's chief minister, Thomas Cromwell. Under Cromwell's direction, Catholic culture was targeted by the dissolution of Catholic monasteries and by the removal and destruction of Catholic art. Cromwell accused Henry VIII's second wife, Anne Boleyn, of adultery and a treason. He then successfully convinced Henry VIII to have her tried and executed. Henry was willing to do so since he was enamored now by Jane Seymour and frustrated that, like Catherine who bore him Mary, Anne had not borne him a son. She did give birth to a daughter, Elizabeth, who would later become queen. Without real evidence, Anne Boleyn was declared guilty of adultery, treason, and incest with her brother. On May 19, 1536, Anne was executed. Henry VIII went on to successfully marry four more women, Jane Seymour, who died in childbirth giving birth to Edward, Anne of Cleves, who separated from Henry, Catherine Howard, whom he executed, and finally Catherine Parr, who outlived him. Lateran V and the Council of Trent before the Protestant Reformation was fully underway, the Catholic Church had tried to prevent the Church and society from fragmenting. At Lateran Council V from 1512-1517, an attempt was made to fulfill three goals, political peace, church reform, and defense of the faith. Reform of the Church entailed eliminating simony, especially when electing the Roman Pontiff, and by bringing the Church to her earlier observance of the sacred canons. The reforms proposed by Lateran Council V were reaffirmed, but in deeper and stronger ways, during the Council of Trent. The Council of Trent, from 1545 to 1563, confirmed Catholic doctrinal teaching, especially regarding the issues of concern to Protestants, namely the sacraments, justification, original sin, scripture, and tradition. Penalties for those guilty of grave sin were also explicitly assigned. With respect to concubinage, the council asserted, and the concubinage is when uh, a priest has a, a woman who he lives with and he's not married. And the council asserted this, In order to meet this great evil with appropriate remedies, the holy council decrees that if, after being admonished on the matter even officially three times by the ordinary, they, that is the priests, have not objected their concubines, the women they're living with, and disassociated themselves with them, they are to be sentenced to excommunication and not absolved from it until they obey indeed the admonition given them. In the year following the council, its teachings were summarized in the 1564 Tridentine Creed. A few years later, in 1566, Pope Pius V issued the Council of Trent's Roman Catechism. 